turnaround Tuesday, everybody. I'm Dale Pinkert. How are my warrior brothers and sisters today? Okay, so just a couple of things I want to cover to update and follow through from yesterday. Talked about Euro Kiwi uh, being assured that we could break down under 170. That's happened. Well, we did have a false breakdown back here. Uh, this time it may not be, although I see a one and a two and perhaps a three coming but you know anywhere in here yesterday at face opening 70 60 decent trade 80 pips you know my philosophy book half um also was negative cad yen all right and it was a nice break uh if you didn't book anything and anything i ever talk about you have 30 to 50 pips you take half you go be um change my mind and uh, part of the reason was I was thinking Canada might uh, rally stronger than it did. But everyone knows from last week I've remained constructive the end. Okay, we had this confirmed high last week after a very nice three drive pattern developed down here. I, I think we're going to take out this 107 level, uh, minimum 107.50. But I think there are a lot of people with stops over this high, this high, and I think the grand prize could be this prize right here over 108. So I think there's a potential of that happening. In fact, um, just looking at a corrective move from 115, call it 10, would take you to 109 or so and change and would still be a bear market rally. So I know that the argument is, well, you know, risk off, s and P's looking uh, real heavy, and that's true. But, you know, I could give you months of when I was looking to short S&Ps because U.S. dollar yen was weak, and it took months for that correlation to kick back in and reach a tipping point for the S&Ps and indices to finally cave. So, you know, S&Ps, uh, I think, you know, can rally, but they sure certainly look weak. Uh, you know, I have no divergence on the one hour time frame on the S&Ps, but they could be trying to dig their heels in. A lot of bears coming in. Uh, great call by Steve. I'm going to want to see where his triangle is, but um, it's just hard for me. I have more conviction about U.S. dollar yen than I do on almost anything on the board except maybe crude, which, you know, double topped up here looks pretty negative to me. Um, so, you know what? There's an old philosophy. Stick with what got you there. So what got me there last week was this call. Uh, it hasn't done anything to, get, to negate it. It closed over the two-week off number, two-week reversal. So I remain constructive, at least short term. So why can't we go call this... Uh, 109 and then go 95. So that's what I'm looking at right here. So flat CAD yen, Euro Kiwi still looks like it could happen. You know, here's your daily look. It's trying to hold the 50 day. But when I look at this, ABC, and then I look at really how it's worked off being oversold down here, not with a great price correction. Yeah, maybe we rallied halfway back, but why can't we have something like this from here? So uh, to me, this is some also a fairly high conviction trade. But even when you're high conviction, you you know you got to ring the register when you have a big move your way, like you know one, two, three, four, four big candles, extended range candles your way. You have to say thank you, Mr. Market. I'm going to at least get paid on part of what I am taking risk on at this time. Give me a why if you know how to say thank you to Mr. Market when he gives you windfalls. Doesn't mean you have to cover everything in case the windfall turns into a deluge of profits. But I think it's very important psychologically to be taking partial profits. Also, uh, you know, it's going to take the heat off, right? Reduce pressure if you can, so you don't lose your marbles by the time you're my age. So try and take the heat off, like Glenn. 
Okay, so you know the big day this week is obviously what was the risk? So even if it's a one to one, Eric, you're only taking half, right? You would think so, but you know, like I was saying, Mike, there been uh, there was such a breakdown in correlations for such a long time. I mean, look, I could go to the weekly yen here, right? And we've been, you know, peaked all the way back here, right? In April of uh, <laughs> 2015. So here's April of 2015 in the S and P's. Right, so the end's really been going down, and you know, even if I go to a shorter term yen chart, and you know, you guys know I love correlations, right? So even from here, okay, at 118, which happened right at the beginning of the year of 17, if you were trading that correlation and take it from me, they do break down, so yen's been been going down since the beginning of 17 here's the S&P's look at what the S&P's did I had some marbles yeah I had a cat's eye and a puri and boulders so give me a wife you could see how you could go broke sometimes trying to put the whole jigsaw puzzle together I like doing it to give me a holistic approach but you know when it comes right down to it Every instrument has its own personality. Trade what you're trading, not what you're watching. How about that? That's a new one for me, Zig. Trade what you're trading, not what you're watching. If I take half at 50 and get stopped out at break even, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you you'd make 50. Yeah. I guess that's what it would do. Taking half. But what if the half at 50 or the other half went to 150 plus? I mean, you're not going to sit there with a BE stop, right? Okay. Well, I hope I didn't confuse anybody not trying to do that <laughs> I, Eric Eric likes to complain I do plenty of it myself my trading warrior brother so uh, I'm gonna bring Blake in because um, that's really all I have to offer right here is uh, US dollar yen and euro kiwi that are telling me something uh, we had the RBA tonight last night and it looked like it didn't really hurt the Aussie, but Kiwi's a little stronger than Aussie. So I bet Blake has some ideas and commentary on the Aussie after the RBA. Well, you know, you know, hey, Dale, uh, um, you hey, know, the buddy. RBA was a it was a non event. And um, okay. so the Aussie just, you know, bounced back. But the Kiwi's actually a little stronger. And, you know, uh, every yeah. every everything that I read about why the Kiwi's so strong is just risk sentiment. You know, it's um you know, stocks obviously have uh, bounced back today. And so the question is, you know, is this bounce going to continue um, now that we're back towards the 200 day moving average on the S&P? And, and that's that's really that's the, really the question right now. And, and I think if we can, you know, get the turnaround Tuesday, um, that's where you start to see this um, this recovery in uh, in 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 you know, well, the Kiwi will continue to recover, I guess, and we were just talking about the Kiwi, but the Kiwi is better bid today because of the, because stocks are, are, are stabilizing, but, you know, what's yeah. going to be really uh, yeah, interesting. They're stabilizing like a little blue dot. <laughs> well, well, as far as stocks go? <laughs> well, I'm just saying the range today so far, so it looks like anything can happen to me, doesn't it, Blake? I'd love to see it rally. Yeah, um, I mean, but, I mean, it, it, who knows? Yeah, it, it's 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 one of those it's one of those situations where you know we don't 
um, we have to see the open, see how stocks react at the open. I mean, the 200-day uh, moving average is a couple points higher from where we're at currently in the S&P, which is, you know, 25.95. We're currently at 25 or 25.88. Um, the dollar, you know, keeps pushing its head right up against the resistance, and and you have to watch this dollar index. Where where is my dollar index? Uh, I, oh, there it is. Um, well, you know, we're right at resistance. I mean, we're right here. Um, you know, I, is is the dollar going higher? I mean, it is if we if we can press through here, and that's that's this is the uh, resistance is 90, 90, 20. I think if we break above ninety twenty, the dollar is going a lot higher. Um, but you know, uh, you, you you have to see the euro um, break through one twenty two eighty, which we're probing there right now. But you know, uh, it's 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 it, it's already it's already bounced. So try to make a try to make a move down to below one twenty three and and kind of bounced already. And um, you know, the pounds holding up. The pound had a little bit of a stop loss run this morning but has bounced bounced back the uh the the US dollar Japanese yen um you were talking about the yen i mean we're we've got to you know press against really it's the dollar yen's got to break above um here let's this is what i'm looking at anyway um i would say this uh 10660 really to get the dollar yen um you know moving moving much higher so so it's it, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not really convinced just yet that the uh, that the that the dollar is ready to go. I mean, I, I'm 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 put on a little bit of dollar longs just to, you know, kind of test the waters, just to have some out there. Um, but I mean, look at the euro. The euro's already, you know, yeah. you know, the, the euro's already bounced back. I mean, it was trying to make a make a bit of a move, and and um, and and it's and it's it's uh it's kind of holding up so I wouldn't um well your daily on the dollar said it all Blake because I mean we've been range bound in a fairly tight range for a month now right yeah, yeah that's that's it I mean that well I mean you look at the dollar index and we're tightening in this um here in this uh in this apex of the this yeah. triangle and we're not breaking out yet um, you know, will we eventually break out? I'm, I'm assuming we will, but you know, is it, is the breakout going to be higher? Or is it going to be lower? You look at, um, you know, uh, uh, overall uh, the dollar, even if we get a short term recovery, what is it? You know, is it just, is, is, is it just a short term recovery in an overall bearish trend? Because the, the dollar index, even if we do squeeze above 91, which which I still think is possible, if we squeeze above 91, is it going to be a um, is it going to be a bullish break where the dollar makes a full on recovery? I, I doubt it. I think that the uh, I think that the um, the the dollar is still even if we you know here I can draw it for you guys. You know, Blake, I was thinking before uh, you know a few months ago and for quite some time we were talking about the extreme positioning in euro the longs, you know, all the record longs, and Jim Welsh talked about it, then maybe this is just going to be a function of reducing the bullishness and you see some shift in uh, the COT that people aren't as bullish euro as they were weeks ago. I don't know. Maybe it's already starting to show up. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the 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 euro. I mean, the the euro's got its own you know set of problems, but I think the euro is being looked at as you know an alternative to the dollar at the moment. But um, you know, uh, the, I I still think that the euro positioning is pretty extreme. So we could that that's the that's the one thing. If there's one thing that I think can fuel a dollar recovery is just more position squaring. Um, versus uh, the dollar, something fundamentally has changed. Um, like, let, let's take a look at um, U.S. dollar, Singapore dollar, okay? And look at the overall trend of the U.S. dollar, Singapore dollar, okay? Right? It's it's a pretty bearish trend. Look, look at the U.S. dollar, Korean won, okay? And I think the and, and look at look at that look at that pair it just continues to break lower. I think the overall trend of the dollar is still down. 
overall. Um, and and you can see, I think it, it's 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 feeding well into these Asian currencies because of the you know um, trade uh, issues that we have going on. And and I think that that's going to be the overall path for the U.S. dollar. So even though the dollar may be in a slight recovery right now, even if it does um, near term squeeze higher, which I think is entirely possible, I think it's going to be short lived. So like I was draw drawing for you, I think that if we see a recovery in the dollar index, it'll look like this. Uh, where's my pen? It'll and in your like week ahead video, and, you yeah, know. that's right. In your week ahead video, you said we need closes over 92 to get bullish. So maybe it goes there. That would certainly squeeze out a lot of dollar bears. Yeah, it's, it's, it's to resume it's, its downtrend. It's actually it's actually above 91 is what I'm looking at it. We we have to make this move above this dotted line. That's where we really have to this is where we really, you know, start to squeeze a little bit in the dollar and you, you start to see, you know, the dollar really, you know, stage a stage a bigger recovery if you will but you know what I, what what and and it's it's it so it's tricky it's not straightforward and it's not something that you know i i look at everything and go okay well you know what exactly what am I, exactly am i going to do today and really what i'm focused on today is i'm i'm focused on this, uh, on the s&p and see if the s&p will continue to recover you know the s&p is um you know it, we have a recovery right now going on after the overnight. And I, I was actually surprised. I've been, I've, I've, I've been surprised at the um, recovery. There, there was no follow through. There was no downside follow through. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that the uh, European markets are in, and, uh, and, and uh, the Asian markets didn't really um, give us any follow through. Actually, if you look at the Nikkei, the Nikkei turned higher. Yeah, yeah. Great point. Yeah, you know, they were closed, and Europe was closed when the route happened. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so, so the, uh, the you know the DAX, you know the DAX is looking a little bit better this morning. I mean, if you look at the DAX here, let's go over to the. You know, the DAX is down, but it's recovered off the lows. You know, um, you know here's here's the here's the Nikkei. The Nikkei's you know rallied you know, sharply from overnight. You can see this is in US session yesterday and overnight we've really recovered. Um, here's the uh, here's the French markets. Um, you know, here's the uh, here's the Spanish market. So yeah, you know, it's not as it's not as bearish as you would think. And then you look at you look at the US equity markets. I mean the Dow's up well I think well uh, let me see here. My futures say we are up 131 points in the Dow futures. So, you know, and and continuing to to move higher. So, I mean, this recovery and risk is 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 getting some legs. And, um, you I mean look at the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq is uh, Nasdaq's up um, 58 points. You know, from what I can see right now. So, you know, we are we are seeing a, a continued recovery in equities, and that's um. You know that's going to keep that that right there will keep the dollar from being you know too bullish because I think the dollar responds better at least at this this point in time the dollar responds better and and risk off and you know while we got risk on you know the dollar is the dollar is being sold so um, one of the one of the you know trades that that one of the things that I'm really you know keeping an eye on is the dollar Canadian. Um, you can see the dollar Mexican peso is also uh, continuing to drop. Um, th these are really good. Um, uh, these are really good, um, you know, potential long trades in, with with the NAFTA with with Donald Trump looking to, um, you know, shore up the NAFTA deal. Um, you know the the uh, Canadian currency is faring much better, and and so is so is the Mexican peso. So as long as the dollar stays weak, these should stay weak. You look at the longer term outlook of like the dollar Canadian. Uh, we have a big head and shoulder pattern here. You know, so below like 128, it gets pretty bearish. So you know, overall, I think the uh, the I I think the 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 dollar is kind of mixed here. We like I said, we got to wait for the open, see how stocks respond at the open, but. But overall, you know, the dollar is, um, you know, just 
nudging up against resistance. And you know, as long as we stay below 90.20 in the dollar index, it's just not, you know, not uh, not bullish yet. You know, it's 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 uh, it's it's trying to trying to firm up, but it's not quite yet. I don't think this is this is it. Man, this dollar Canadian really is uh has come under some pressure. Like just in just in the last just in the last uh, 15 minutes, as North American traders have come in, it's um it's really really slumped there. So anyway, um, um, and, and and I'm you know it's it's very whippy out here, Dale, and I'm not really unless until the dollar, and I, I should actually just do this until the dollar moves out of this range here, this little range. Yep. There's a whole lot to do, you know. I mean, you're yep. just it's gonna it's gonna you know whip around here, and um, you know, is, is there is there is there a lot to do while we're while we're while we're sitting here? I don't know. You know, I don't I don't I don't necessarily I don't know. But stocks have you. stocks have squeezed higher. We've we've seen the stock market you know continue to continue to recover. And again, we're right at the 200-day moving average. The question is going to be whether we you know close above or below it you know if we get a sell-off at the open if we get a continued recovery um we get turnaround tuesday um i think a lot of people are are like me you know sitting on sitting on the sidelines just kind of saying okay well you know the stock market didn't uh you know didn't follow through so what do we do now and and that's you know that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking currently so you know uh, blake you know i keep coming back to this reading i i saw a week or so ago that with all this volatility, 500 up point updates and down days in the Dow and S&Ps up 60, down 80, um, that all the volatility, the belief of the trade war is showing up in indices. But as we've shown and you've been showing all morning, uh, they say normally if the markets really believe there's going to be an intense trade war, currency volatility picks up. and I, I don't see volatility. We're trying to figure out which way it's going to come out of a tight range. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't. Yeah, we don't see it now. And and um, you know, we were we were actually discussing that at the office earlier this morning. That uh, you know, this currency volatility, I think, is more of a result of equity market volatility and not uh, vice versa. You know, so the the dollar has been relatively benign at this point, and, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. But yeah, that's a great observation, Dale, and it's something that something that uh, you know, ironically, we were talking about earlier uh, this morning. So that's another idea I stole from someone else. <laughs> so, um, uh, hold on, really quick. Um, so anyway, uh, I, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in uh, Steve and Stelios and see if they're here this morning. Are you guys here? Green I am team. here for sure. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Stelios. How's it going? Thank you. Very well. Hey, 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 I'm here as well, Mitch. All right, good. I got uh, Steve and Stelios here. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. I've got to get uh, I got to get to the markets, but um, but I want to bid you all a great day today, and um, I'm going to pass it over to you guys. So, okay, good hunting, Thank Blake. Blake. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Hi, Steve. Hi, Stel. How are you guys today? Uh, we're good, mate. We're good. How have you been? Good. Waiting for some. Waiting to see your chart so I know what to do. Uh, can you see my charts as we speak? Yeah. Well, right now I see. Oh. Okay, got him. You're up there. Okay. Okay. Nice. Great. Great. Um, so, um, first of all, how, how have you been, uh, Dale? How was the night? Uh, uh, fine. Uh, what well, you know? Uh, the game was kind of a blowout. Villanova is uh the champion but uh you know i i want to see some action here in the currency markets it looks like it's all in the indices um yeah I, are you a little seems, surprised I you know seems... I, I was talking about that with blake are you a little surprised that with all the volatility we're having in equities and you know we were looking for it and you talk been talking about it for months that currencies have been so quiet especially european currencies 
No, no, I'm not. I'm not particularly surprised because you know I I, I tend to expect more or less anything uh, at yeah. uh, the, the end of uh, of of the quarter. So yeah. you know uh, nothing would surprise me. I mean, from uh, benign weird, or uh, quite. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's weird. It, it's yeah. it's not very usual. I can attest to that, but. On the other hand, you know, end of end of quarter uh, flows in this in this case obviously didn't cause uh, any increased volatility. There is no question about that. But I do think that uh, we might be uh, going through a little bit of a calm storm. Um, so I do think that, um, especially if we keep on having like um, uh, big moves in uh, in stocks, we, we're going to see effects uh, remain, you know, um, in you know, in such a depressed uh, volatility. Uh, state. I mean, especially the majors. Just just look at the Euro USD here, for, a, for just for as an example. As you see, we have had this is the fourth consecutive day so far that we whether we just see like a short pin bar. In essence, uh, you know, one of, one of the most liquid, the most liquid uh, currency pair uh, on the planet it has been doing nothing for four consecutive trading days. So um, obviously, you know, that cannot go forever. I believe that you know sooner uh, rather than later we're going to see some breakouts and. Most likely, since it's going to be it's it's going to be the beginning of the quarter. Still, um, we I think that uh, you know any any moves we're, we're going to see are, are probably going to produce uh, some follow through as well. So I, I I don't think that we should be expecting any reversals to uh, whatever moves um, uh, you know we'll be start seeing whenever that happens. Um, my guess is by you know by the end of the week or worst case scenario by next week we should start. Uh, getting some uh, some movement in uh, in the FX world as well, um, you know USD card. I don't know if you, if, you, if you spoke with Blake about that, but USD card seems to be you know making a move already. I think that there is a good chance that we are going to see some uh, follow through here because this looks to me like a triangle here. Let me mark it. Let me make it a little bit more obvious. Okay, this looks like a triangle to me here. And I think this is another move lower. So, so in essence, I'm expecting that perhaps we had an A, we had a consolidation as a B, and you know we 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 need to see one more move to the downside. That's why I actually uh, initiated half a position, uh, like uh, I think it's 12 pips uh, higher from here. Actually, when I came uh, in 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 the house, like uh, what was it a few minutes ago. Um, so I'm, I, I've reestablished half a position here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for lower le levels. I don't think 128 is going to hold. If that's the case, I mean, if I'm reading the market right, if this is a triangle and it was a consolidation after the first move uh, lower, I think that another move lower is coming, uh, perhaps towards 127. It might be a little bit lower towards the 126 area, uh, where we might find some uh, stronger support and see a bigger rebound from there. Um, so I think USD card is all, already showing, uh, you know, the, you know that it has the intention of uh, producing some follow through. Aussie, on the other hand, if you remember, we had a conversation about the Aussie yesterday because we we also had the RBA. Um, Aussie, uh, you know, uh, produced a bearish engulfing. Uh, yesterday and uh, you know, but on the other hand, we, we we've seen no follow through. Actually, we've seen a reversal, which means that once again this 7640 level held, and with uh, by seeing this uh, this level hold, um, uh, you know that means that you know there is the potential for a rebound from here. Um, I would need to see a break above 7750 uh, to get more confirmation. If that happens. Um, I think we might be seeing a push higher. Now, where higher is going to be, uh, there are two alternatives here. One of them is perhaps a revisit of this uh, red descending trend line. The other one can even potentially be, of, of course, I'm jumping again, I'm just showing you know, ahead, uh, another test of the blue trend line here. So it can even be uh, a new, uh, new multi-year high, I mean, uh, towards the you know, levels we haven't seen since 2015. That wouldn't really surprise me because uh, the Aussie has the potential of rebounding from here and still maintaining um, a rather bullish uh, profile uh, in the short term while while, um, uh, while maintaining uh, you know this corrective uh, long term uh, pattern which which can produce a big down leg uh, at some point in the medium to uh, to long term. Okay, so this is something I'm keeping in mind. If we also visit the Kiwi, we can see here that the Kiwi once again. Uh, has failed to break below the 7180 area. As long as that's the case, uh, you know this looks looks to me like a triangle, 
and you know it can easily produce some follow through to the upside especially if we see this descending trend line uh, break so in all honesty i might even consider buying some of it uh, if we see a break uh, you know above this certain line um so you know commodity currencies uh look quite good right so and you know th this is something i'm keeping in mind of course how does that uh, how does that go along with um uh, with seeing uh, equity moves like the one we saw yesterday it actually doesn't uh, and you know this, this is this is one one thing that creates you know a little bit of a question here. so uh, you know what, what's what's going to happen if uh, if uh, stocks keep plunging from here is uh, is uh, a risk on going to resume in uh, some of the uh, currency markets that we've been looking at obviously that comes back. but on the other hand you know uh, what we've talked about plenty of times is that do we have any evidence that uh, the move lower in uh, uh, in stocks is is impulsive and not just you know a bigger correction to a market that was overblown? Absolutely not. So you know my point here is that I'm not really troubled by uh, seeing some of the commodity currencies uh, you know trying to get bid here simply because uh, I'm not convinced at all that uh, stocks have broken to the downside and. Uh, you know, we, we should be expecting that we've already found the top of a multi-year uh, bull market. I don't think that's the case. Uh, we did close below the 200 EMA yesterday in the SPX, which we said is an important level. Uh, that do doesn't tell me much in the sense that I said that if we break below it, we can, I, you know, my target would be 2480. We can e either we can even see a move down to 2400. Uh, but you know, unless unless something big happens i will be looking for support down there i will be looking uh, potentially to 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 even be buying that move in the short term although although i believe that uh, stocks are going to find a high rather soon and the bull market doesn't have much more to run that doesn't mean that you know um it, it can't keep on moving higher after a correction, like for a few months, right? I mean, we might even see a top later in 2018, in 2019. Nobody can pro pro predict that in in advance. So um, I just wanted to explain myself and why I don't think that uh, yet, yet, you know, uh, I should, uh, you know, I should let uh, my outlook in uh, commodity currencies be uh, blurred by by what's happening in stocks. Now, uh, since I spoke about the stocks, I, I have nothing much uh, else to say. I mean. Um, first of all, there is a little chance that this was a false breakdown. Okay, there is a little chance that that's the case. Uh, if that's the case, we're going to know soon. But even if it isn't, as I said, 2480 is is the level I would be looking for. Um, if we break below there, it's 2400. Only if we see a move below 2400 and in an impulsive manner, I will start uh, looking seriously in the possibility that uh, into the possibility that. Uh, you know, uh, stocks have have actually found a high, right? Uh, until then, I have to remind something. Uh, Dale, you can attest to that. We said very, very early after we saw the first move uh, lower uh, at the end of January uh, that um, we believe that volatility uh, started at the end of the first month of the year, and it's here to stay. And you know, this is my, this is still my thesis. I mean. I believe that even if this is a correction and the correction finishes at some point, uh, you know, in the near future, and we even push the new highs, I don't believe that we will be seeing again the more or less sick environment that we had with volatility being at the single digits almost constantly, uh, indices slowly uh, melting higher. I believe that uh, volatility is here to stay even when we will be seeing moves to the upside so um i believe that we, we are really in the last legs of this bull market right as i said though before don't get trapped by that idea meaning don't think that uh, you know uh, you've already seen the top so you know it's uh, you know it's a free trade to to sort it and just you know close your eyes and uh, let it evolve from here now having to do with the usd yen since it's correlated i, I want to say that once again we saw a very big move lower yesterday in in, uh, in stocks we actually saw a new low in the spx but on the other hand usd yen is quite higher than its lows and uh, if i have to say something here is obviously that uh, you know 
uh, today's move shows that it might even want to break high from here. And I'm noticing this divergence and, you know, I cannot uh, keep myself from uh, pointing it out because simply if we find a low um, here and we push higher, I think that then we can even see a move back to 109, right? Uh, perhaps with this, um, if I zoom out, you can see once again this important ascending trend line. It was a trend line support. It has now bro been broken to the downside, so perhaps we find some resistance there, but that trend line is now uh, passing at quite higher levels at 109. So, you know, there is the potential of a, of a stronger rebound here for the USD. I, in my yeah, uh, humble opinion, I think it's a magnet, buddy. But you have a lot of people short this pair. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we were also seeing uh, both in sentiment and in, um, uh, in positioning that people had finally, uh, after years, uh, had turned actually net um, uh, long again, especially sentiment was quite bullish again. So bearish. The USD yen. Now, if even if we fib here, we can see that ah, there at 109, we have the 50% fib from the last move lower, right? So yeah, sure, why not? I see the potential for a stronger rebound from here uh, before even considering resuming lower, right? So um, yeah, I think you know, I think that um, you know that we see quite a few signs that the market might. Uh, might rebound, which also, as you understand, I mean, if we are seeing a USD yen that is showing the intention to perhaps sustain a little bit longer rebound, and we're seeing a Nozi and a Kiwi and a CAD uh, that are trying to uh, rebound, that means that probably, you know, we should pay a little bit closer attention to the Aussie yen, the Kiwi yen, the CAD yen. And I'm saying that, why? Because I was having a look before and, for example, the Aussie game has been beaten down quite a lot. It has broken below a very important trend line support. You can see it here, right? And this is, this is definitely a bearish development in the medium to long term, but it has already produced a very strong move and, you know, it can easily produce we're a still, rebound. From we're here. still looking at so, USD, Steve. We still have you. Um, sorry, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it's it's perfect because the connection is not very good. I've already switched to Aussie, but trust me, I have it in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's trying to switch. It's, let me see. Yeah. Tell me actually when it does. I will. You're stuck. Because I don't. Yeah, I don't know any way to actually force it to happen. Uh, actually, I do know. Let me try to pause my screen and uh, press play again. Okay. What about now? Now change to your you have Any six better? panels. Yeah, you have I, six I, I panels. Can, yeah, I can see that. Now go to Aussie again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I really you better come home. Don't understand why it's. Yeah, I really yeah, don't I understand why it's stuck. I think you're going to have to cut your vacation short. But there you go. Oh, that's there. That's Kiwi in. Yes. You got Kiwi in now. Okay, I I stopped setting and I started yeah, setting again. You now, have what it. do you see? Pause again. Okay, it seems to be behind in time actually. What you're describing to me. So oh, anyhow, you know. uh, there is a horizontal resistance. Th there is a descending trend line and a horizontal resistance um, uh, that both come more or less at the 82 level for Aussie yen. So I do think that if we actually see a break above 82 in the Aussie yen, we can definitely get a stronger rebound. Uh, uh, perhaps towards 83.50. Uh, there is even a very strong uh, horizontal resistance area at 84.50. So, you know, Aussie yen is a pair uh, that's that's worth monitoring uh, because we have that confluence of resistances that we're testing. And on the other hand, um, you know, Kiwi yen as well is currently testing as we speak, descending uh, trend line resistance. Uh, so it's a little bit higher actually at 77.30 somewhere there. So, 
you know, both of them are trying to you know, to mount a reversal here. And, you know, for the equivalent uh, target for uh, the first target for Kiwi Yen, by the way, for the rebound of Kiwi Yen is at 78.30. So, Aussie Yen, Kiwi Yen, and even if we see CAD Yen, let me switch to that. By the way, uh, do my charts uh, follow you? Uh, I mean, can you follow my charts now, guys? I think there's a lag what are you still on Aussie Yen. Okay, that's quite weird. But you didn't have that yesterday, right? No, yesterday you were perfect. Actually, I was about to say your connection was better than usual. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so Cadian is also, uh, you know, uh, is also showing the potential for reversing. Even in, you know, somebody can even see an inverted head and shoulders formation here. And the first resistance is at 8480, in my opinion. So. Uh, you know, all all three pairs, uh, I think, are looking good. Uh, they're, they're getting close to levels that if we break above them, I think they should produce some decent um, flow through from there. So, uh, you know, th these are the things I, I, I'm moni monitoring and I'm mentioning those because many of the uh, pairs that we uh, saw yesterday more or less have been at the same uh, place that we left them, so there's nothing much to add there. But we didn't have a look at at some of the yen crosses, which we just did, and um, you know we hadn't uh, made a comment uh, following uh, you know yesterday's uh, plans. So uh, Stelio, if you can help me out with any questions, so we can see what people want to, uh, you know, what people want us to inspect closer. Oh yeah, uh, euro and pound cross as well. Go ahead, Stelio, tell me. I was going to say, sure, uh, the problem is that your your charts are not updating to what you're talking about, so I don't know how we're going to tackle that. Maybe, like, for na na right now, you're showing the Kiwi Yen, which I think was some time ago really? that you spoke about. And now it's a CAD Yen, so it's it's kind of, it's not following. Yeah, anything. it's with a big lag, yeah? Yeah, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Stelio. I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass the screen to you, actually, uh, and I'm going to take it back and see if that if that fixes the problem, okay? Okay, fine. Uh, can you actually take the screen yourself? Because okay. Hold on, I've got it. I've got it. Perfect. There we go. And and then you know. Uh, okay. And then I'll show. And then I'll give you the screen, or do you want to take it? I'll give you the screen. Uh, let let me see your screen first because I'm not seeing it yet, and then I'm going to take it back. And I'm going to show the euro and the pound crosses actually because I think uh, those are interesting as well. Well, my screen is showing for some time now, so if you can't see it, there's a there's some problem with your uh, yeah. Connection. There is indeed. Okay, Celia, so I'm going to reconnect. Okay, so go ahead and talk a little bit about the RBA. I'm I'm, I'm reconnecting. Okay, just just to make sure. Okay. Um, talk about what the RBA. Well. There's not much happening really yesterday, but I can talk about other things. Um, okay, cool. So I'll start with the chart I always start with, which is uh, the Dixie. Um, I still think this, I've had this view for some time now. I, we've gone through this on the webinar a few times. Uh, I think the, the dollar will find a little bit of a lift. Um, I thought actually it would happen on the previous FOMC when they would, uh, when the Fed would actually, uh, Powell would actually say that the base case was three hikes, maybe more, which is what he did effectively. But surprisingly, the dollar didn't really, um, didn't really do much. I still think because of positioning, because of, um, of a lot of factors, we, we're probably going to see a little bit of a bounce in the dollar and, um, and then we start going lower. So I still think we're going to see and test that 92 area, 92, 92 and a half. That's a pretty big, big area there. And then, um, you know, obviously it will depend on what Trump does, uh, what China do. Um, but that's this is my main thesis. And and from this, um, we can go to other instruments and see how they are going to be um, affected. Um, actually, one that I really like is I've talked about this many times. I think USD knock. We've seen this before. Um, what's surprising me a lot with uh, with the kroner is that the market seems to ignore the good uh, good things the good data and put a lot of em emphasis on the bad data for example we had a big beat in uh, cpi last month came in at 2.2 uh, percent year on year up from 1.6 if i recall so it was a big jump 
um, ahead of uh, target. Um, the kroner rallied a little bit, so USD not fell a bit. And then we had something like I think it was retail sales or something like that, which which missed, which is okay. It's it's important, but really not as important as inflation. And the move the other way was double what it was um, from the inflation point, which just baffles me. So I I personally still think we're going to go up to something like eight. 8.1 8 maybe on, on dollar knock and I'll be looking to short that uh, quite aggressively. I still really like this pair to the downside and the same as uh, Euro Norway, uh, people who follow me and talk to me will know that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I use very little leverage, actually zero leverage on this, uh, on Euro Norway and, and on this trade as well when it happens. So I, I don't mind waiting for it to perform. Um, By the way, I'm back uh, when, whenever yeah. you... Whenever you feel like it, you can uh, pass the screen and see if this time it works pro properly. I would just try to, uh, you know, to fill in the uh, the time. That's no problem at all. There's not, I mean, there's not much that has changed in the past few, past couple of weeks, apart from equities. Equities have been the big mover, but the other, you know, like pairs, uh, uh, FX pairs and bonds have done nothing. Uh, you know, 10-year US have just yeah, been that's very true. They're trading two water, yeah. Two, yeah, you know, you were talking before and, and Blake was talking before about how things are not really doing much except um, equities and uh, how FX and Dale said how FX volatility was low. Well, look at bond volatility. You know, given the moves that we've seen in equities, they've been... Yeah, it's incredible. incredible. Really incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Great point. Great point. You sure don't get the flight to quality rallies in bonds like you used to. Yeah. That's pretty exactly. scary. Scary. And, uh, and you know, bonds, I, I always look at bonds first for a reaction to things that are happening. And I remember when I was trading for the for a bank, the bond traders were the, the people we really, really wanted to talk to every time there was something happening. So uh, it, it baffles me how bonds are very quiet. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's commonly accepted stadium that, uh, you know, bonds are, you know, the number one thing to be looking for. FX is the second one and equities come last, right? I mean, yeah. very, very, very often equities realize last what, you know, the bond market smells first and what FX reacts to next. And very often, you know, um, equities are the last one to realize that something is happening. Yeah. And we've, we've seen that, that in very serious occasions as well, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Steve, I'm going to pass you the screen. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very, Let's nice. It, very, it very nice. Very nice analysis, though. I love your. I mean, I, I, there's not that much to say, unfortunately. You know, in my in my world, the last couple of weeks has not much has changed, except from equities, obviously. But um, I do my best. Okay, uh, guys, but can you see Euro Kiwi, by the way? I can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I, I want to remind that everybody. Yesterday. Ah, nice. Um, okay, I want to remind everybody that I kept saying for a long period of time that if the cross currencies of the euro and the pound turn the one that i would be looking for to be short is this one euro kiwi why because it was the one that was not responding to the bullish moves the others were producing lately and it was actually capped very nicely by this 61.8 percent fib uh which which is also a horizontal support uh, resistance area as you see and we actually finally broke below decisively with today's move below this ascending channel because if i zoom out you can see that this was a this was an ascending channel that the market was respecting uh since um since actually like 13 months ago uh, 13 yes, and a half Steve, months ago Steve, I, put like out a, I put out a pip on it yesterday not not a forex analytics pip but a pinkered in really play. because I, because because I actually uh, got figured short this pair like uh, how how much is it like a less a little bit less than 50 pips ago I had a, I had an order to go short below this little week at half a position and they have another order to go short another half a position if we go below this low I have an order actually a little bit below that at 167.90 because I don't like round levels I want to you know I want to be a little bit lower than that so. You know, I, I think that there is a potential here to at least, at the very least, come down at, at and retest the 166.75 area. So 
you know, I, I yeah. always, for those of you that are following, you, you always know that I have horizontal resistance and support areas in my charts, and, and they believe in them even more than me. And your 200. So. Yeah, and the 200 is actually is converging, so right. it's soon going to be there as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I so, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking actually to others. I said I have another order to go short another half position and you know I'm, I'm looking to to book some at least at 166 uh, 75 and you know we see what happens from there because if we actually break down from there as well I think you know there is a lot more downside that is that can come from this pair. so you know I'm going to show you the rest of the euro and the pound crosses I start from this because I had said in advance that I believe it's the weakest of them all so obviously when I show a turn this is the one I wanted to be involved with Right, so let me switch to euros. Eh? By the way, Stelio, did it switch to the euros this time? Uh, it's still on zero kiwi, euro kiwi at the moment. Oh God! And you know, uh, I'm I'm here seeing what I'm setting actually, and I do see in what I'm setting, uh, you know, that I've changed my screen to the euros. Eh? Hmm. Okay, as it seems, it might have a little bit of a lag again. You'll tell me when it switches. I'm going to start describing what's happening here. Uh, I have been maybe saying for the switch. Euros. Eh? It, it maybe it'll switch. switch during the interview. <laughs> okay, just switch. Okay, nice. Switch. <laughs> so, I, so I, okay, so, so there's a little bit of a lag. It's okay, we can live with that. So I was saying in the Euros eh, uh, that since we broke out from this triangular formation, I thought that the market is going to at least give a shot to the 161.8 and that's exactly what it did so uh, uh, to be exact in a daily closing basis that's exactly the high that we saw the 161.8 intraday we actually penetrated that uh and then we we reversed and you know this reversal from this key uh, extension is quite important to me as well so you know i, I I'll, I'll i'll be I'll be looking lower to the 157.70 area because I think that we, we should at least retest that. Right. So I do think that we found a short term, at least a short term high here as well. Obviously, you're trading counter trends, so you always have to keep that in mind. Even in the Euro Kiwi, although it was it was failing to produce new highs as the Euro uh, Aussie was doing, you have to keep in mind that this is more or less a counter trend. Uh, trade right so i mean you have to respect accordingly so you know adjust your levels ac accordingly or your your stop um, i just want to make sure that everybody realizes that but i do think that there is a potential for these reversals to extend uh, to the downside so let's let's have a look at the equivalent pound crosses the pound Aussie and the pound kiwi i know that you will obviously have once again a little bit of a delay when but it's okay when it's ready. so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i just switched it okay uh so as you can see here from the pound dozy uh the pound dozy also um reversed and i was looking for a retest of the 161.8 extension there as well we did not get there we we got very close to that but you know the market um i think they uh, you are the one that's been saying you, you can't look for perfection in the cap table, right? That's your expression, am I right? Yes, he Dave? has, he has said that many times. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so yeah, uh, we, we didn't we didn't exactly reach the 161.8, which was at 185.52. We did get all the way to 150, uh, 185 and change like and seven pips. Uh, so you know, we we came like 50 pips away from that but still we reverse from there definitely the move lower for the pound Aussie has not be, been that emphatic as it has been um, for the euro kiwi and even the euro Aussie uh, but i do believe that at least one more leg lower ideally ideally i would want to see a retest of the double top and the breakout level which was exactly at 180 it was 179.97 so um you know i would also want to see at least that level being retested in the pound Aussie. Say, uh, am, I, am I showing the pound Aussie? Yeah, 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 yeah. A few seconds afterwards. It takes about 10, 15 seconds for okay. you to switch, so you're fine. Okay, it's okay. So I, I would really want to see if you see that's exactly what I had done. I haven't, I haven't changed my drawings. After we broke out from this angle, 
I actually said that we're going to push to the 161.8 and then we might see a deeper correction towards 180. So we almost got there. We're seeing that we're seeing that reversal. I think that we should get down to um, uh, to uh, 180 at the very least. Uh, same deal with the pound key. We just switched. I know it's going to switch a little bit later. Um, I'm seeing a corrective move lower in the pound key as well. I think it can extend lower. Uh, where to? Uh, 192.27 is an area of support I have in mind. Um, if we go below there, I think we can retest the 191 uh, level. So bottom line, uh, or this ascending trend line, you'll see that there is an intermittent ascending trend line uh, support. I'm going to zoom out as well so you can see it a little bit later. Um, I think we can get back to at least retest uh, that area before we resume to the upside. So I think that you know some decent corrections might unfold um, for these pairs uh, in uh, in the uh, near to short term, and you know that's why I wanted today to focus in these pairs and the yen pairs because first of all we didn't see them yesterday, second of all uh, because I think that they, they are the only ones in the Fed that are actually more or less moving. Uh, Stelio, I, I think uh, we, we have some time to, to take a couple of questions before Dale has to start the interview. So uh, yes. if you want to give me some questions that we haven't sure. already covered. Sure. I mean, there's quite a few, but I'll start from the beginning. Uh, OK, you covered yen, uh, guppy and uh, euro yen. OK, uh, gold. Our friend Maj Majed is asking about gold. OK, let me that. have a look at it. For him. Okay, nothing really has changed with gold. Gold remains trapped within a triangle. Uh, the boundaries of the triangle are roughly at the moment, let's say uh, 1310 and 1350. So it's a $40 range. Uh, it's not, I know it's not very tight yet. Um, you know, uh, in, in, my intuition tells me that there are higher chances of a break higher uh, from this triangle because we came in the triangle moving uh, you know, from lower and in quite an impressive manner. Uh, so obviously, as long as we are within the triangle, you have the options of trying to um, trade, uh, you know, the boundaries of the triangle. So, you know, uh, trading resistance, uh, you know, shorting resistance, going long support if we find them once again, or you can expect a breakout and trade the breakout. As I said, I will feel more comfortable trading a breakout if it is to the upside, because Simply, my intuition tells me that the chances of a break higher, uh, you know, um, are quite more significant. What else tell you? Hey, Steve, maybe if the yen goes to 109, there's one more dip to buy gold. What do you think? Sure. Uh, you know, gold can easily move down to 1310, uh, which is like almost a $30 move from here, and still be uh, within the triangle. So, yeah, sure, why not? It can happen. Um, right. Uh, our friend Dina is asking about crude. Did we have a look at crude? I can't remember, actually. No, we didn't. We did have a look at it yesterday. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely. after we had a look at it, it produced a very, very strong move to the downside. And if you remember, I had said in advance that, listen, I think there is a, there is a good likelihood that this is a triangle. But even if we break below it, it still won't um, invalidate the possibility that this move to the downside is corrective because you can't know in advance what kind of a form a consolidation or a, corrective, or a corrective move has. So it can be a triangle, it can be an ABC. Uh, but I have to tell you that yesterday's move, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, the nature of yesterday's move is a little bit troublesome if you're long. I'm not long, I'm not short. If you, if you remember, uh, I had stated my thesis, I wanted to see another push higher for crude towards 69. And if I saw any failure between 69 and 72, I, I was very interested in actually sorting it. I still believe that there are high chances that crude is going to find some kind of a support and push to new highs. Um, for me to believe that we've actually seen a double top, because in essence, if we fail from here, we, we will more or less have seen a double top, right, near the 67 uh, level. Um, so, but for me to be convinced that that's the case, I would need to see a move below this ascending trend line that you see uh, here that has acted multiple times. Let me zoom out. That it was a channel. It was an ascending channel. 
into a, this trend line was acting as the channels of resistance uh, for a period of time. And after we broke above it, this, the same trend line has been acting as support. So for me to start believing in the theory that we've seen a double top, I would want to see, uh, I would want to see a break below that. That trend line currently comes just above 61. Okay. And it keeps ascending. So the more we prolong getting down there, the higher this trend line comes. So until we see that happening, I will still remain of the opinion that, you know, seeing a new high is a high probability. Only if we see a break below there, I'm going to start treating this as a double top and I'm going to be looking to sort into strength. Okay. Um, so, you know, nothing else I have to add. I think we need to see more price action. What else are you? Well, it's, uh, it's past the hour. So do we have a guest today? Yes, we have. Oh, one yeah. Of yes. the best, we have one of the best Bundy and news traders on the street with us, Adam Button. Excellent. Oh, we have Adam. Okay, That's perfect. Enjoy the interview, my friend. All right. Enjoy your vacation, buddy. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stel. Okay, Adam. Thanks, Stel. I'm going to pass it, pass you the baton, buddy. Looking forward to hearing what you're thinking going into April. Now that we're in April and it's no longer April. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey there we are. Oh, hey. doing great. Uh, nice to be here. So, yep. Uh, yeah, things are things are good. Uh, yeah, happy April, everyone. Looks like it's going to be a lively one. Okay. Well, you know. Uh, Great to have you always, but especially at the beginning of the month, Adam, because uh, you do a lot of great seasonal work. And uh, before we get started, uh, happy birthday. Hey, yeah, feeling a bit older today. Uh, yeah, it's my birthday. Thank you very much. Yeah. What are you, like like 24 now? <laughs> still still 19. Still 19, going on a few years at that. Yeah. So I'm just trying I know to you probably didn't like it when you were younger, but having a young look... The older you get, the more you'll appreciate it, man. I guarantee you. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are talking Aussie hitting major support last week and the RBA yesterday. What are your thoughts on Aussie seasonally and technically and fundamentally with what's going on here with China and the U.S., et cetera? Sure. Should I, uh, should I show a screen here? Sure. Let's see which one I'm showing. Uh, you got a chart up? Any? Is there, you can see a screen on there? Yeah. Yeah, I have Forex Live up there, buddy. All right, this guy? Get some okay, charts now up. We have, now we have very small screens, and now they're bigger. Okay. <laughs> All right, there's, there's a daily on the chart there. Okay. So there's I'll move the All right. Um, daily? Yeah, so I, it's been, I mean, I, it, for me, technically, it's, it, there's that 200-day moving average it's been flirting with forever. I mean, it's... That's kind of the story technically everywhere right now. It's these 200 day moving averages. Yesterday broke in stocks. Um, yeah. And now you, you kind of got this trend line. I guess you're working off in, in, a, in the Australian dollar. I guess that's what we're talking about. I mean, yeah. to me, I, I'd be worried a bit more about a return back to 75. Um, you know, there's, there is this turn, though, in central banks, and you'd expect it to come to Australia and the RBA. Um, you know, what we saw yesterday, it, it adds to that a little bit. Um, but you know, there, there isn't that much to get excited about technically. Seasonally, however, it is a good month for the Australian dollar. Um, really, the whole commodity complex. Um, I can I can pull up some some charts on that and uh, just close Skype here. Um, and uh, well, uh, you know, well, well, let's start. Do you want to run through the seasonals, Dale? Yeah, let's go through them. So yeah, so uh, basically. Uh, commodity currencies, uh, uh, Canada's reflecting it, uh, the weakness that we're seeing in USD CAD. And we had a little, nice little pop in gold is trying to threaten a breakout. But crude looks negative. So, you know, you just, uh, whatever is on your radar, you just take us through it, buddy. Well, I mean, to go through the, the seasonals, really, they add up pretty well at the moment from where we're at. I mean, the big one um, to start today is really is the Canadian dollar. So, as we wrote about the Canadian dollar, there's the kind of heat map and that's dollar cad so you see up at the top april there the two and a half percent almost uh average over the last 10 years and, 
and you can see only two of the last 10 have been up years or two of the last 12 have been gains in dollar cad and on top of that today there's news out of the u.s that nafta trump wants to announce something positive on nafta at a summit in peru that starts next week april 13th and uh i mean obviously that's where we got the is that where we got that additional acceleration to the downside after that announcement today? Yeah, well, I mean, that to me was a good, I mean, it was reported again. It was actually reported about 12 hours ago, um, and then nobody really picked it up. And I guess Toronto rolled in, you know, an hour ago and started to sell the pair. And, yeah, you saw it down about 50 pips extra on that. And that's where we're at really at the lows of the day. So if you add it up for Canada, you have this seasonal, seasonally positive um News and you, you're coming, you know, you're fighting off a bit of resistance at dollar cadence 130, 131. I mean, we kind of broke it, but it, it's, it's back down below. And uh, and NAFTA deal, if that comes to fruition, and it, it's a really nice setup, I think, for dollar CAD shorts. And, it, and you see seasonally, it's, it's very strong um, for the Canadian dollar week for the US dollar. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Some strength. Uh, maybe the preferred trade is uh, USD cat short over Aussie long, but they're they're pretty much uh, kind of the same trade, aren't they? It is. It, it really is. I mean, there has been a bit of a divergence just in the last little bit because of NAFTA. So I think that right. Canada can come back and and do a bit better than the Australian dollar on that as well. And okay. and I mean, really, kind of dollar trade. If you look at just the U.S. dollar, um, uh, April is the worst month for the dollar index. Um, and it's particularly weak against the euro and sterling um, and the commodity currencies. So though I wouldn't really focus on the yen um, and especially, uh, however, when we had Kuroda come out today and say that, uh, that, that he's thinking about an exit strategy for QE. Um, so there, there could be some dollar yen weakness there as well, but it's a poor month for the dollar seasonally. Um, you know, there's obviously going to be the trade headwinds and, and that story. Okay. Uh, interesting there. Uh, what What is your view? Do, do you really believe, um, in fact, I've been asking a lot of people this, and uh, I know I could get some kind of answer from you, is that, I don't know, about a week ago, Adam, I was reading that um, if the trade war was going to be very real and intensify, which is what's moving around stock indices lately, that we would be seeing more volatility in FX rather than suppressed volatility that we've had. With the moves in equities, it seems like volatility has compressed. Is there anything to that argument that the currency markets seem not to be worried about a trade war while the equity markets are? I mean, it's been a bit of a puzzle, right? Because there, those worries are real and they are genuine. And to think, you know, the FX market is so much smarter than equities, uh, that's a little bit of a stretch for me. I mean, you see bond yields even breaking down a bit um, below where they were a month ago. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I just think the market is confused about what to do in the case of a trade war. I mean, who remembers like the last real trade war? I mean, either I, I, I was only three. I barely remember. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you almost got to go back before the Second World War before you had. You know, this has been a lifetime trend of openness, globalization, open borders, and you know, as long as we've had Bretton Woods, it's been kind of moving in that direction. So. Uh, I just think the market's a bit confusing. Yep. And I, I should mention one, sorry, the one last point I did want to make on dollar cad before we moved away from that. You got a bit of a head and shoulders pattern here up to yeah. 131. And you can see it. And, you know, we're now, now we're sort of approaching the neckline. You announce the end of NAFTA, maybe back to 125 sort of thing. And I think that's probably going to be a pretty good trade this month. Yeah, nice look on that. A lot of people focused on it. Makes me skeptical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, but it, yeah, can't fight this shampoo food. though. Other ones, you know, they, there are some other seasonal patterns I'll, I'll touch on if you want. Natural gas sure. is a very strong one, which also sort of plays into the commodity currencies. I don't know if a lot of people are trading natural gas out there, but it's it's one. Oil is in a bigger, longer-term seasonal pattern. I mean, OPEC is is on the push and pull right now, but I am worried about Iran and Trump leaving the Iran nuclear deal. And then the final one, um, I mean, it certainly didn't start out that way, but March is. Why? Uh, was uh, 
does John Bolton kind of cement that we're going to pull out of it? I mean, we know his views were more than just not being in a in a treaty. Uh, Bolton's views are even more radical than that. What are we talking about, NAFTA? I'm talking about, John, you said you're a little worried about Iran and pulling out the agreement. Oh. Does, does the appointment of John Bolton, who has a very uh, militaristic, views, even though he's probably going to walk them back, seal the deal that we're going to pull out of the Iran deal? And what yeah, implications I, would that have for crude oil? Well, I mean, what we saw before, it takes about a half, um, um, sorry, 500,000 barrels per day out of the market fairly quickly. Um, and then you have, have the tensions that are going to come with it. I think Saudi Arabia sense is really a once in a lifetime chance to vanquish Iran and, and is pushing that forward. Iran certainly doesn't mind. And I don't think Trump minds a little bit of in, Middle East instability because US oil producers don't seem to mind. And that's a, that's great that's a for booming point. today. Yeah, that's a great point. So I don't, you know, everything kind of lines up for more trouble for Iran. I mean, it, it'll make Trump a little bit hypocritical on the America first sort of for, uh, stay out of foreign wars rhetoric. But like you said, Pompeo and Bolton in there now, they are certainly hawks. Yeah. Um, and to come yeah, back to the seasonal. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Uh, stocks. It's, it's a very good month for stocks. It didn't start out that way. Um, today, there is a bit of a bounce. I mean, really, any index in the world, any major index you look at, April is is excellent month. Uh, the best or the second best month of the year. You know, it seems, like, it seems like foreign markets... Like yesterday during the route we had here, Europe was closed, and there was very little follow through overseas. In fact, some of the patterns in the outside the US forces look more constructive than the US does right now. Have you noticed that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you had some that are starting to look a little worse, like like Germany, but they they, you know, valuations are better in a lot of these places. So I mean that to me shows more of a functioning market. I mean, Trump is doing the thing, this dance with Amazon as well, and tech's been a little bit crazy. So that's fine to take some of the froth out of there, but you know, Amazon's an American story. Tech is really an American story. Uh, elsewhere, uh, it does look a little bit better. Um, Can you ever you remember know, a president having this much impact on volatility in the markets by just what he says? Uh, or maybe we didn't have presidents that said much that created this type of moves in financial markets. I can't it, remember it. It's nuts. I mean, you have an American president attacking an American company. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm talking whatever. about a president having that much impact on the market. Yeah. I, and I, it's overstated, but if people are scared. And I don't think if we hadn't had a 10-year bull market, it wouldn't quite be the same story. But people are trying to find a reason to be scared. And that's fine. I mean, it, it's been very very volatile. I mean, all I'm saying is the seasonals are great in April, um, that there are plenty of things to be worried about uh, in, in terms of the headwinds for the market. So, you know, that's 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 kind of the take right now. And I think one to, to really like, my, you might like this, take on, on trade negotiations and tariffs and everything else is America, the market has it wrong right now. America isn't trying to take on the world. America's trying to take on China, and they're using NAFTA. I think, well, Trump, from the steel and aluminum tariffs, we found out um, there were some leaks out of the EU negotiations, and one of the points they wanted from the EU was to back them up against China. And I think they also went to Mexico and Canada and said, hey, listen, we want a deal, fine, we're gonna make a NAFTA deal, but we are going to some kind of trade war with China, and we wanna know if you're on our side. So. I think what looked like America against the world has turned into America kind of creating this coalition of the willing, or coalition of the reluctant to take on China. So they'll, China will suddenly see that it's everyone against them led by the U.S. And NAFTA's, that's why the deal is going to get done. And I think the Canadian, if we're talking about stock markets, the Canadian stock market, the Canadian dollar are going to move in sync higher. And I think you have a very good good case for buying that, something like EWC, then you get the currency exposure and the equity market exposure. It's a pretty good trade for April.
What an interesting idea. Yeah, and, and uh, would you say that the majority of equities or uh, what would you say the percentage of natural resource stocks would be in uh, EWC? Or, yeah, or, it, or, financial services as well is, is a, probably an equal part of it. That's all kind okay. of banking and, and uh, but you have like infrastructure things that, that are starting to look pretty attractive. Enbridge is a pipeline company. It's big in the U.S. too. And, and a few others that are, are more energy services than direct energy. But again, I, I don't think oil looks that bad. I think oil looks okay here if it ran ramps up as well. Um, and have to get done. And what the problem with Canada, if, if and, and a lot of people don't know this, is that Canadian oil trades at a massive discount. I'll pull it up, uh, just what it is here at the moment. So it's trading just on pipeline gluts, really. It's at a $22 discount to WTI, and that's Why? all. Why? Yeah, it's a glut. Canada only exports to the United States. All the oil from Alberta only goes straight south. I mean, Canada has three oceans, but there are no pipelines running um, east, west, or north. And so you have Keystone XL that's coming online. You have other pipeline shutdowns because of leaks, environmental concerns, protests, and that oil hasn't been able to get to market. They're using a lot of rail to get it to the United States refineries, but those same refineries in the northern United States are being inundated with shale oil. So you're suddenly competing with that and, and then and to pipe it all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico is very expensive where there's more refining capacity. So there's a massive glut there, but it's, it's loosening a little bit. Some pipelines may open up um, and may find a way to get that to market. And if you just close that gap, the price of oil doesn't even need to go up to benefit the Canadian dollar. Interesting. Uh, I'd like to wrap it up with, you've been around for a while, Adam, and you've seen flight to quality rallies. Uh, at times when there's a little disarray in the markets and what uh, do you think of the fact that you know the bonds yield 10-year yields have come down to 275 but really not getting the kind of flight to quality rallies that we're used to in our career uh, what do you think's behind that it's been tough I mean I, I'm not gonna I mince mean, words. Uh, February, March was tricky. You'd be heading one direction, it would break down. Everybody was excited about 3% yields. It didn't happen uh, on tens. And and the way it's filtered through to FX has been tough as well. Um, you know, right now, I think you, you do have to go with the flow if you're trading intraday and look for headlines um, to get on board. And I think NAFTA is one of those, uh, or central bank moves. Certainly, the tide has has turned, I think, in, in Sterling, about some of the worries there. And and if you can avoid anything to do with that stock market sentiment, because it, it it turns, it turns harshly. And I think it really hasn't been that big of a deal for FX. Yes, there's some yen buying, um, and, and probably that will continue. Uh, so it's a tough one. That's really yeah, all I can yeah. say. But, yeah, I mean, but, people aren't yeah. used to them both being bad at the same time. Maybe that's uh, the era that we might be moving towards is a bear market in both. Because usually your flight to quality is in bonds. And uh, to me, it looks like just a correction in rates down here to 275. So, yeah, you're, uh, you're sort of, you know, unless you invert the yield curve, I mean, what's twos, tens right now is 49 basis points. So yeah, that's, that's another of, problem. Your floor on on tens is twos, which are 226, and rising, right? Yeah. Because rates are, are still probably going to go up this year. And but then the Fed says they don't want to invert the yield curve. So how much is the Fed going to hike after all? And then you kind of end up in this circular argument about well, then I can't buy stocks. Um, right. And and the FX market's just saying, I don't know either here. Let, let us just right. let's just get There's into a lot of I don't knows out there. Except for in Euro Kiwi today, uh, that seems to know. Um, let me ask you one more. I know I said that was the last one. This will be okay. Gold and silver, your views, and do you pay attention to the gold silver ratio at all for uh, the fact that silver might be uh, is so undervalued compared to gold that it might be the sleeper? to probe into this time time frame? 
I think the problem for me is supply with silver. A lot came online and a lot is idled in terms of mines. And so I don't believe in another guy who really does believe in this is Ashraf Lady, who's, who's who I work with as well. It's also his birthday today, so happy birthday! Today. Oh wow! Uh, we we, uh, we talk about this all the time, and 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 he's a big believer. But I don't think that that silver looks very good to me. I don't think gold looks great here either. It looks like it's topped out, um, and and we're gonna head back. And it's a bit of a range. Range, and I think the market wants some kind of geopolitical signal. I don't think there's an inflation trade in gold anymore. I, I think it's all geopolitics and and those sorts of worries. I mean, the, the temperature in North Korea, though, is coming down. That might be a head fake because it always seems to be with North Korea. Uh, but uh, in the Middle East, it, it might be rising. And then, and then I think you maybe, have a pretty uh, compelling... Maybe, uh, you know, the strong month going into May, uh, April, in equities that you talked about could be that the markets uh, uh, didn't think it was possible that Trump comes out of there with some type of deal that looks great, that may not hold years from now, but looks like he accomplished something that no other modern day president has been able to accomplish. And we get, uh, yeah. we get some type of peace deal. On Iran? No, with North Korea. North Korea. North Korea. Yeah, no. Sure, yeah, like that'd be great. But again, okay, so you have, you know, you might get a, a North Korea deal, but then you lose an Iran deal. And with NAFTA, you might get a deal, but then you're in a trade war with China. And yeah, so, great points. you know, you kind of have this push and pull. Well, you're on these like shifting sort of ground here. And uh, and that's what the, I mean, you can just see it in the market, in almost any market, that, that sort of worry. But you know, Europe is getting better. Um, you know, some of these places on the periphery, emerging markets look okay. Yeah. So, maybe so you know, there are a lot of either ors there, uh, you know, what we're talking about today, Adam. But one that isn't is happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Adam and Ashraf. Happy birthday to My trading yeah. warrior brother. I hope it's a great. That's a very year. good Elvis sort of birthday. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Why not? And I hope it's a great year for you and Ashraf, and that pips rain down on you, and you guys have continued success in your your own accounts, and everyone who hears your voices and reads your material. Thank you so much for coming by, Adam, and have a great birthday. Well, thanks so much. Here's a good health and health as wealth for sure. Thanks, Dale. Thanks Thank for having me on again. You're welcome, brother. So that's Adam Button. Our turnaround Tuesday is complete. Euro Kiwi crashing. We'll see everybody tomorrow. I have a crypto guy tomorrow. So we'll go on the dark side. We had Adam, who's the light side today, and we'll go crypto to the dark side. Yeah, <laughs> well, so I didn't mention, I almost forgot to mention, it's, it's positive month seasonally for Bitcoin. So I don't know okay. what that's really worth because you're pulling in some 2011 when Bitcoin was like 80 cents at a great yeah. month in April. Yeah, what a bargain. But, yeah. yeah, you could buy yeah. a used car or buy a Bitcoin. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that was such a, such, such a nice song. Thank you. Thank you, man. And remember, everyone, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone tomorrow. Have a good day hunting. And thanks again, Adam Button, my friend.